Let's make a DMR code plug. I'm gonna get some three by five index cards and see if that will help with understanding what's going on. If I can get in this stupid box. That box was way more difficult to get into than I needed. We've got some three by five index cards here. And I'm gonna start off with figuring out who I want to talk to. So first I'm gonna think of my friends. So we've got KN4YCD, which is Jim. We've got K K six U S Y, which is Chuck. And if you were writing this, you could put me in K M nine G, which is me. Okay. So there's a couple of people. Now I want to think about talk groups and on DMR, we have this, it's kind of like a, a party line type setup where instead of talking one-on-one -on -one with a person, you can talk one to many with a group of people. And so some of the groups that are out there is the toads group. the Alabama link, Parrot is a talk group, but Parrot's a special talk group. I, I put the R before the P, but we'll take care of that. Wisconsin TAC, tactical group, the Wisconsin tactical group, WI TAC. And then there's also some analog channels around here. So you could do your repeater, or you could do 146.52 for the two meter calling frequency, or you could do 44600 for the 70 centimeter calling frequency, or you could do 144.39 for APRS. And in some regions, there's even a local simplex group. There is not one around here, but that would be where you would go with that. Okay, great. Now, we have a bunch of people we wanna to talk to, and you kind of notice that these fall into some groups. So we've got some plain old analog stuff. And if you had DMR repeaters, you could program in a DMR repeater that way. I don't have DMR repeaters either. So there's all of my analog. And then here are my talk groups, the lovely parrot again. And then we have people. Okay, so now I'm gonna make some zones to put these people in, these talk groups and these simplex frequencies. So let's do TG. Let's put all of our talk groups in the TG zone. And then we have people. Let's take all of our people and put them into the people zone. And then we have analog. So let's take all of the analogs and put them in the analog zone. Okay, so now we've got three different zones. And I'm gonna take those zones and I'm gonna drop them into my accordion file, my, my radio file. So I open this up and let me take my analog and we'll put it in the first slot. And let me take my people and we'll put them in the second slot. And let me take my talk groups and we'll put the talk groups in the third slot. So if we look inside, you can see that I have analog and then I have people and then I have talk groups and there's room for plenty more. I can put more, more contacts and more envelopes and continue to get after it that way. So I hope that analogy has helped make it make a little bit more sense for you. Let's get over to the radio, the CPS, the code plug software, and see what we can do about that. Let's make this work. We are going to install the code plug software to make the code plug that I just showed you with the index cards and envelopes. First thing we're gonna to need to do is go to Radioity's website and download a bunch of drivers and software. Let's do that. So we need to click on support in the upper right hand corner and then we need to pick the Radioity radio and then we need to pick GD88 and we want to download the programming software and we want to download the Win 7, 8, 10 and 11 driver. And then once those have downloaded, we can click this icon here to open the folder they were downloaded into and we can close Firefox because we don't need Firefox anymore. First thing we have to do once we get the software, there's a whole lot of first things we have to do. We need to get the cable driver installed. So we'll go into the cable driver folder. I'm gonna drag this folder onto my desktop because it's actually inside of a zip folder and I don't wanna mess with a bunch of stuff I shouldn't be messing with. 
and we're going to look for the application. There are two of them here. You can tell in the type column application, check chip version, and the driver itself. We need to install the driver before we can check the chip and before we can plug the radio in. So let's run the driver installer. Okay, now that we have the network driver software installed, we can plug in the radio. Let's go ahead and do that. Once we plug it in, it's gonna start trying to find software for it, which we just installed, so it should be fairly quick. And it installed successfully. And it says it's COM3, so just make a note of the fact that it's COM3. If it doesn't tell you what it is or you ever wanna check it out, right click on computer, select manage, go into device manager, Look under ports, it'll say prolific USB to serial COM port, and then it'll have COM3 right there for you. So let's close device manager. We can close the driver folder. We can remove this folder from our desktop now. And that puts us back into our downloads area where we were already inside of that zip file for the driver software itself. So let's go back up one level and there's the Radiotity code plug software. Let's double click on that. That brings us into the zip file. Inside of there, there's a program, programming software folder. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna drag that to the desktop. And then we can just close this window now. We're done with that. Let's run the installer for the code plug software. Yes. Next, 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 and you're done. We'll finish the install. And then it puts a Radiotity icon on your desktop. Okay, now that we have all of the software installed, it is time to work on CodePlug, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's go over to our Windows machine here and double click on the icon on the desktop to launch the Radiotity radio software. The first thing that I always do when I'm working on a CodePlug is I read directly from the radio. That way I know that I've got a connection, I know that I've got the right software and the right radio and the right cable and everything's all set up properly. And it gives me a good place to start from. From there, I can load a file from disk or I can back this file up to my local disk as a backup. So we're gonna do that right after this. I'm gonna click save to save this and this is going to be my first code plug. So now it's saved locally. In case I make any mistakes, I can revert back to that. So where do we start? You've got all of these different settings down the side. We're gonna make a very basic code plug to get you on the air. There's a ton of advanced features that this radio can do, but right now I wanna just get on the air. So I'm gonna go into basic parameters and make sure that my call sign is set, radio name KM9G, and make sure that my radio ID is set. This is my radio ID, get your radio ID and put yours in there so you're not impersonating me. And then I wanna go down to contacts and contact list. The way this software works, there's no way to have an empty contact list. There has to be one call in there. So I went ahead and prepared for the video by making some empty contacts. And now I can go ahead and change those contacts and I'm gonna put in just a handful from the envelopes and index cards that we started out with. So first one I wanna put in is Jim, KN4YCD, and Jim's contact ID is 3152157, and it is a private call. And then I wanna add another one by clicking the add button at the top. And I wanna put in Toads. This is our Toads DMR group and it is linked to DSTAR and Diffusion as well. Come join us. I'm gonna put in the 3192083 ID for that and mark it as a group call because it is. And then I wanna put in Alabama link and Alabama link is 31010 and it is a group call. And then I want to put in Parrot. And Parrot is 9990. And put Parrot in as a private call. And it will work, it will reply back to you that way. If you put it in as a group call, everybody else who has it as a group call will hear you, but no one will be able to reply to you. And what else do I want to put in here? Let's do the hurricane net. And there's a limit on the number of characters that you can put in. So I'm just gonna put in hurricane, so they can't put in hurricane net. And the hurricane net is 3199. Okay, so now I have all of my private and group calls added. I need to go down to Rx group. And this is something that we didn't go over in the index card envelope metaphor, because there really isn't a metaphor for that. So I wanna make sure that I can listen to all of my digital contacts. So I'm gonna add them so that I can receive them on this receive group called digital. And that'll come into play in a second here. 
So just just kind of take my word for it on this one. If you don't have this set, you'll be able to contact out. People will be able to hear you, but they won't be able to reply because you're not listening for their reply. They're, they will be talking. Your radio will be receiving it, but you're not going to hear it in your ear holes. So let's go into zone. And if we click on zone by itself, it'll pull up the zone list. So first I want to give these zones good names. Again, you can't have zero zones. So I had this prepped and ready for you. So my first one is going to be the friend zone. And I'm going to add another one. I'm going to call this one analog. Then I'm going to add another one and I'm going to call this one talk groups. And now I've got three zones. Excellent. Let's go into our friend zone and add our contact. And there's a whole bunch of contacts in here already because it was an empty zone and I created it and it doesn't it doesn't like being empty. So there's 17 contacts. I'm going to go to the top and click on the first one. And then I'm going to delete 16 because again, you can't have if I if I tell it to delete all 17, it's going to complain. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to tell it to delete 16, which is going to leave one like I've been telling you. And we are in the friend zone, I believe. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to add a digital contact of KN4YCD. And I'm going to put in my hotspot frequency here, 443.125. And it automatically changes my TX frequency. And because my hotspot's in the same room that I'm in, I'm going to go ahead and put this on low. And then RX only. Most of these settings you can leave alone. One more thing that we need to do, and that's assign Jim's contact to this record here. So we need to go over to the list where the contacts are, and it automatically picks the first one off of the contact list. So just double check that it's got the right contact there, and it does. So that will make that set up. Analog, let's go and take a look at analog. Analog, I want to put in the two meter calling frequency, and that is 146.52. And because this is analog and I'm trying to talk to the world in, well, I'm trying to talk to the neighborhood, I'm going to set that on transmit power high. And I'm going to make sure that this is channel mode analog. And then I'm going to add another one. And this is going to be the 70 centimeter call. And the 70 centimeter call is 446, one, two, three, four, four, six, zero, zero, zero. And transmit power high again. I'm going to add another one. And this one's going to be APRS. And APRS is 144.390. And make this high. And I can put digital contacts in here, but I've created this as an analog zone. So this is going to store my analog channel. So I want to make sure that, you know, in my in my file cabinet, in my record keeping system, that all my analog contacts are inside of my analog zone. And we'll show you on the radio and it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so now I want to go in and do my talk groups. Digital, and the, what I'm going to do is come over here to the end because this is kind of clunky how this works. And contacts, how many do I have? I have Toads, Alabama Link, Parrot, and Hurricane Net. So I need to add three more. And I'm going to make this Toads, Alabama Link, Parrot, and the hurricane watch net. And then I'm just gonna start going backwards till I get to the beginning again. And I need to change the RX group to digital. And this is that part where if I don't have an RX group, I'll be able to transmit to them, they can hear me, they'll be able to transmit back to me, I'll have RF activity, but I won't be able to hear them. Let's change this to digital, let's change this to digital, and then Let's do low power. And then let's change our frequency to 443, 125. 443, 125. And this is the frequency that my hotspot is listening on. Your hotspot might be listening on a different frequency. And then now we need to name these. So now I need to go over and look to see what the names are. Toads, Alabama Link, Parrot, and Hurricane. Toads, Alabama Link, Parrot, Hurricane WatchNet. Okay, so now we've got all of that set up. Let's get it written out to the radio by clicking the right button. 
And you'll notice I never picked a COM port or a speed or a radio type or any settings like that. This radio software is meant for that radio and it is intelligent enough to figure out what COM port it's on. If it doesn't figure it out, you can hit the COM up here and make those setting changes manually. Okay, let's get to the radio and test it out. Okay, here we have the radio and let's see if it did it right. So we have KN4YCD, which is our only friend. So turning that around isn't going to work. Let's change over to our analog group. There's two meter call, 70 centimeter call, APRS. So those are the three that we put in there. And then we change over to our hotspot group, our talk groups. There's toads, Alabama link, parrot, and the hurricane watch net. So those are the four talk groups that we programmed in. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing on my new setup on the radio. Jim, can you hear me? Are you calling me private or on toads? I am calling you private. Yeah, 555, five, five, man. All right, switching over to toads now. Kilo Mike 9 Golf on toads. KN4YCD, are you there? KM9G, KN4YCD on Alright, that worked. Thank you very much for helping out. Whoa! <laughs> I love it when something works. Okay, I hope that metaphor helped you out with the individual contacts and talk groups and analog simplex repeater type stuff all going into groups, which are then zones, which are then put inside the radio. You can add more contacts and more repeaters and more zones. You can add a zone for where you're going on vacation. You can add a zone for where you work versus where you are at home if they're far enough away. You can have multiple zones that have multiple sets of analogs in them. If you wanted to have a set for GMRS frequencies to scan, you can do that. This radio has a ton of features. This really just scratches the surface of code plugs, hopefully in a way that gets you connected with the metaphors and the mindset of making your own code plug. They're not difficult, but it does take a little bit of understanding because you don't immediately associate it with that file cabinet type metaphor that I showed you. I really do hope that helps you out and I hope that you can use this to expand your code plug or create a code plug from scratch if you don't have one yet. There are some links in the description down below where my friends over at Radiodity are willing to give you a big chunk of discount off of this radio. This radio has a ton more features. We're going to do a ton more videos on it. So be sure to stay tuned for the channel for more of those type of updates. And for even more Code Plug awesomeness, there is a live stream that Jim and I did where we went through and downloaded all of the information out of our brains into your ears and eyes and built some Code Plugs. One for this radio and one for the... BTEC 6x2, I think it was. Check it out. I'll be over there waiting for you.